Peth Asiedu Quartang is an MFA candidate at Illinois State University. As an artist, Jepeth produces works that address the social and environmental issues within the rich Ghanaian cultural and traditional values. His works are largely inspired by traditional Ghanaian and African symbolism and how people of the diaspora are able to negotiate their way through. Separation within a family is a transcultural phenomenon, which may be due to intentional and unintentional circumstances, with its consequences and effects being diverse. Chapet's work, as a result of my responsibilities, is an exploration of the serving of food and dining in an indigenous Ghanaian home, where patriarchy is displaced by the matriarch and the children, as a representation of how people are separated from their families in these current pandemic times. It is a mixed media installation of ceramics and wood. The choice of materials is significantly influenced by their symbolism. The work triggers loneliness, anxiety, guilt, nostalgia, lack of bond, and inequality. It is also an assessment of belongingness in the current times. Jamie Bates Sloan is currently Assistant Professor of Ceramics at the University of Oklahoma. She earned her MFA from the University of Kansas and her BFA from the University of Central Missouri. Her current work is an exploration of the complexities of mental health in relation to her personal experiences with depression and anxiety. This type of reflection has formed the conceptual basis of her creative work. By using the figure as metaphor, she is able to convey the sentiments often correlated with disease and disorder. The surface choices are based in color psychology with the intent for one to imagine the surface of the skin as a manifestation of what is happening inside the body and mind. In the studio practice, anxieties about physical and mental health and obsessions with mortality manifest themselves in the choice of scale, charged surface, and uneasy body language within the figures. These are ideas that are continuously shifting and evolving as she further explores the complexities of mental health. As she begins to better understand the illness, she feels compelled to advocate for others who are struggling with their own. She finds strength in knowing that her work has meaning beyond her own healing. Amy Bernard is an interdisciplinary artist living and working in the western suburbs of Chicago. Her practice is rooted in ceramics and sculpture, inspired by the history of materials and the nature of craft, drawing from the world of past art and artifacts as a never-ending source of inspiration. Concepts of crisis, care, and resolution are echoed in Bernard's practice, which has evolved into activism through art, producing a discourse on the everyday militarism of the American school system and the degradation of the educator. Through varying media, she works to showcase the demands placed on educators by the powers that be and calls to action those who are unaware of the tremendous weight society places on the educator. How to be a good teacher in the 21st century consists of slipcast porcelain arms, donated teacher identification lanyards, and QR codes which lead the viewer to custom-made how-to videos. The materiality of each component of this installation is deliberate. Porcelain appears delicate and lovely, but is in fact strong and durable, and able to withstand intense amounts of pressure, just like educators. Ashwini Bhatt, an artist born in southern India, currently works in the Bay Area, California. She holds an MA degree in literature and had an earlier career in classical Indian dance. Ashwini is not interested in creating a perfect object if what defines an object is our removal from it. Instead, she's searching for gestural links that emphasize what we share with the non-human world and how we are related not only to animals, but to trees, for instance. The awareness of our relatedness has ethical implications as we recognize that we, ourselves, are not masters set apart from everything else, but living communities of different organisms affected even by the inanimate world. She wants her art to materialize a personal environment in which the suggestively biomorphic volumes of these sculptures or of photographs and films engage the viewer. So tactile apprehension leads to recognition to contemplation, and to moments of exhilaration. If she's not making art with some awareness of what is at stake in our time, she wouldn't want to be an artist. Shannon Blakey is an artist and educator from Columbia, Missouri. Shannon earned his BFA from Southern Illinois University Edwardsville and his MFA from Pennsylvania State University. 
In this recent work, Shannon has been interested in the interplay between human-made objects and nature itself, in the push and pull between the two. In this work specifically, it was his interest to combine water lines from his own home along with the fragments from reclaimed chunks of nature in order to show the cyclical order of one action to another. In creating this work, he was interested in processing his own role within the larger whole. It is his hope that the work created is both something visually interesting and texturally compelling. These cups include cast directly from his community of objects that hold or transport water and chunks of nature found in his explorations. The bases or saucers are resin casts pulled from fallen snow, rounded up and pulled into his studio. He loves the transformative nature of water and hopes the process he brings to the work holds this. He hopes these pieces also reflect the issues and importance of clean water, a basic human necessity. Jonathan Christensen Caballero is an interdisciplinary artist born and raised in Utah. He earned his A.S. in art at Snow College a BFA in ceramics and sculpture from Utah State University, and an MFA in ceramics from Indiana University. Jonathan's art is based on his personal identity, which was formed both by watching his parents support the family through labor jobs, as well as his mother, who immigrated from Panama. The personal is political, and he feels a moral imperative to create art that is a critique of the oppression of Latin American laborers in the United States. These figures give representation to people who contribute to society at the cost of their physical bodies. His work narrates enduring questions of identity through the use of the human figure, pre-Columbian iconography, and mixed-media sculpture. The figure sculpture he makes is driven by questions of inclusion versus exclusion. Who benefits from the American dream? Who is allowed representation, visibility, and to feel a sense of belonging? Andrea Keyes Connell is an Associate Professor of Ceramics in the Department of Fine Arts at Appalachian State University. She is a former Fountainhead Fellow and served as the head of the clay area in the Department of Craft Material Studies at VCU from 2010 through 2017. Her interest in commemorative objects, particularly the hidden narrative of figurines, has evolved through multiple bodies of work. She has approached figurines in different contexts, as monuments and as statuary, as representations of experience, and as objects of scale. From this perspective, she sees figurines engaging in both private and public narratives. They fit easily in the family china cabinet, but they can depict an image a whole community might receive. At their most authoritative, they would make their way to a community plinth, elevated and honored as a monument. She is interested in how figurines influence communities and homes on what they conceal and what they reveal. Connor Zora is an artist and educator currently based in Washington, D.C. Born in Rochester, New York, Zora studied at the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore, where they earned a BFA in Ceramics and Gender Studies in 2019. Frequently working in porcelain, they draw inspiration from Imperial European and American ceramics. The extravagance and opulence of such objects project an air of idealism and authority. In their work, they juxtapose this luxury with the material struggles in contemporary America. Exploiting our cultural notion of the decorative as docile, they aim to disarm viewers and foster discussions of sensitive subjects in communities that have the privilege of ignoring them otherwise. Contrasting historical aesthetics with modern day struggles, they seek to challenge our understanding of the past and our role in creating a more just present. Louise de Rawl earned her MFA in ceramics at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln in 2017 and her BFA in Visual Arts from Fundacio Armando Alvarez Pendiado in Sao Paulo in 2001. Luisa's work is an abstracted representation of herself, her identity, the way in which she relates to others and understands the environment she is in. She uses ceramic materials to create formal abstractions that reveal different facets, physical, experiential, emotional, of herself. Working with clay is her form of being. 
The artwork she creates with this clay is influenced by the different cultural experiences to which she has been exposed and the ways those interactions build her identity. Cultural and language barriers provoke a sense of displacement and generate a wide range of emotional reactions that shape her perceptions of and interactions with the outer world. She translates these feelings into objects through expressive surfaces created by layering of ceramic materials. Emily Duke earned her MFA from the New York State College of Ceramics at Alfred University in 2016 and an undergraduate degree in crafts from the College for Creative Studies in 2009. The themes she employs in her current work relate to her ongoing research and lived experience with superstition, how we experience the natural world, and our humanistic urge to build meaning around objects we collect. Visiting Lake Michigan daily has given her a sense of belonging during the last six months. She relies on it to offer balance and rhythm, but to also show strength and manifest anger through its crashing waves. During these visits to the water, she began compulsively sifting through piles to collect rocks, brick, and metal slag that wash up on the beach. She brought these backpacks full of objects to her studio and began incorporating them into various ceramic works. This level of collaboration between the found and the maid is new to her work, and she is excited to continue the pursuit. Anna England, Professor Emeritus at Northern Kentucky University, earned an MFA at San Jose State University. She often takes a shared basic form that many beings use, such as insect antenna, animal eyes, or the ears of primates, to show how similar we are despite our individual variations. We live as individuals, but gather together to create families, cultures, and ecosystems. Her hope is that an enlarged sense of kinship will encourage us to be kinder and more respectful of all beings we consider to be the other. In an era where we seem to be deaf to the opinions and concerns of others, listen encourages us, all of us in the natural world who depend on each other, to hear each other's voices in the hopes that the act of truly listening will promote respect, healthy societies and ecosystems, and peaceful coexistence. Sean Irwin earned an MFA from the University of South Florida in 2008 and a BA in Studio Art from Stetson University in 2004. He currently resides in Deland, Florida, working as a studio artist and is adjunct professor for the Visual Arts Department at Daytona State College. He is interested in the use of narrative as a way of understanding the human condition and those experiences that define our personal identities. The stories we tell help to reveal these archetypes, experiences, and myths that are made familiar to each of us through our collective unconscious. As a result, stories possess the unique ability to generate self-reflection and allow us to empathize with one another. In his work, he uses this ability of narrative to inform and amuse as a device to engage the viewer while trying to understand some truth about human nature and the world around us. The content of his work is initially derived from personal experiences that are then fictionalized into sculptural narratives. Although the work is personal in its origin, each piece is inherently public in its scope, relying on the ethical reflection of our shared humanity to generate meaning. The work is ultimately an attempt to sensitize our consciousness to the complex social ecology of human nature. Marisa Finos is a sculptor and multimedia artist based in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. With her sculptures and performances, she explores thresholds of consciousness, body, and space. She draws inspiration from her own reflections on the experience of death and dying in contemporary culture, and her work serves as a platform to engage in conversations that challenge current attitudes about mortality. Finos earned her MFA in Craft Material Studies from Virginia Commonwealth University and her BFA in Ceramics from the University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. Clay is an extension of her body and a means to explore both its fragility in life and permanence in death. Vessels is an ongoing series of large-scale, site-specific sculptures investigating the bodies and spaces we create, occupy, and leave behind. Inspired by ancient and contemporary burial structures created to honor, protect, and preserve the deceased, each vessel is built coil by coil following the parameters of her own body. 
Throughout the week-long building process, she eventually entombs herself. From within, she uses the vessel to further understand her own body and the connection she has to others through isolation, darkness, sound, and vibration. The vessels become transformative portals to contemplate the edges of bodily existence. After her experience inside, she destroys the vessel and reclaims the material, giving it another life. Rebecca Harvey was born in Columbus, Ohio in 1961 and currently lives and works on Lopez Island in the San Juan Islands in Washington. She earned an MFA from Cranbrook Academy of Art in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and her BFA from the University of the Arts in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She taught for more than 25 years at The Ohio State University, where she was both professor and chair of the art department before she left to become head of program Applied Arts at the Royal College of Art in London. In Rebecca's studio below the ground, she faces the pandemic with a bucket of water and a stack of raw bricks. What is there to build when everything crumbles? She decided to investigate the nature of breaking and dissolving and to work with that as a generative rather than destructive impulse. They form a sort of proto-landscape, abstract but holding potential. The raw brick is held in water. She watches the particles fall away and thinks of loss accruing. Then she takes the brick and fires it repeatedly until it finally snaps. The structure can only take so much. Paper pulp is pressed into the split, at once both healing and marking the break. In this way, she practices pushing herself through and beyond all that is happening now. Sin Ying Ho was born in Hong Kong, immigrated to Canada, and currently lives in New York City. Ho is an associate professor at Queens College, City University of New York. She earned her MFA from Louisiana State University in 2001. She constantly explores the collision of cultures in her ceramic work. She manipulates the forms by methods of deconstructing the narrative and then reconstructing it by transforming the familiar forms into unfamiliar and unidentified sculptures. This is basically for her own purposes, but also to surprise the viewer with multiple images, icons, signs, and symbols as a surface narration. To further highlight temporal differences, she combines traditional hand-painted imagery with the use of new technologies, such as computer-generated decals. East versus West, past versus present, symbol versus language, painting versus digital decal transfers, vessel versus sculpture, and 2D versus 3D. These elements collide and evolve into one. This melange of modern and traditional ideas and various clay techniques evoke questions of identity and memory while paying tribute to one of the finest ceramic traditions in the globalized world. David Hollander completed undergraduate work in ceramics and physics at the University of Colorado Boulder and the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. The sculptures begin life as thin strands of fired ceramic. These are broken, joined, and fired again and again, establishing structures and relationships from strands of porcelain, terracotta, and colored clays. Each strand and each group of strands act both as a body and an action. As bodies, parts of the sculpture are lifted up, pushed aside, held together, kept apart. As actions, they reach, break, smother, pin, and bridge. Each strand has a history. It once reached further, got in the way, belonged to another group, or made a space. Structures built from these ingredients investigate and live out real systems of relationships. Actions and bodies in this ecology are collective. Bodies are made of many bodies and many actions. These sculptures are alive. These relationships and interactions are played out in fragile ceramic pieces that do work at real peril to their own safety. These structures are not so solid that their existence is assured. As we consider the social structures around us, which need support and which to tear down, these structures stand alongside us, doing the same work within their own world. Drew Ippoliti is an American artist, researcher, and educator. His artwork is an investigation into how ceramics can explore and consider the regions where both culture and craft collide. 
Ippoliti currently serves as Assistant Professor of Instruction and Ceramics Department Coordinator at the University of Akron in Ohio. Artists and craftspeople are filters that selectively collect and distill ideas, images, and artifacts, ultimately producing an output that energizes communities. Through each of these objects, he explores the self through the lines of a malformed pottery object. None are truly sculptural nor able to function as vessels either. Their only ability is to act as metaphors for feelings of inadequacy in social situations. The job of making others use their imagination is an exploration of this concept by creating a self-portrait reliquary. The item is raw, but also caked in melted candle wax. All surfaces here are created through a process of first over-firing all the clay and then under-firing all the glazes, leaving them porous and poorly fluxed. The surfaces are then scrubbed back with dirt and cleaning products, creating a ritualized process of sullying and purifying. Better Lovers is the moniker for the evolving artistic practice of Leila Marcel and Jacob Rader. Currently, they are applying contemporary dance methodologies to object making. Choreographers designing ceramics and ceramicists making films, they are committed to the entanglement of material processes with things and assemblages of humans and non-humans in complex topographies of being and becoming. You should fall in love with the world around you over and over forever. You should be fallen in love with. You are your thing's thing, too. A reciprocal and co-constituted existence. You get better from using the object. The object gets better from being used. Wearing down, wearing in, over and over forever. The paint will chip, the cup will crack, but we reject the disposable for the indelible. Feeling as bodily sensation, as tactility, and feeling as emotions. One kind of feeling is about touch, and the other kind of feeling is intensity that cannot be touched. In the post-truth, post-internet, proximal intimacy era, perhaps there is something in feeling. The multiple meanings and possible interpretations and misinterpretations of feeling something vital. After working alongside his dad at the family bronze foundry, Quist Joseph earned his BFA from Colorado State University and his MFA from the University of Nebraska Lincoln. Quist Joseph's practice is an intuitive cycle of risk, failure, and reinvention. These missteps pull him into the present moment and foster greater authenticity in the work. He follows his gut to push against stylistic conventions in hopes of capturing the unwieldy nature of how a thought transitions into the physical world. Freezing these ephemeral moments in permanent materials allows him to create a concrete connection between the past, present, and future. This tested record sheds light on the inescapable effects of life, encouraging vulnerability and self-reflection. Birth is a video piece that he shot early in the pandemic. Building the large ceramic vessel coil by coil allowed him to cope with the worsening news and mandated isolation. At that time, he was a visiting professor at the University of Denver, and seemingly overnight, the once bustling studio transformed into a ghost town filled with nothing but half-finished projects. Lately, he's caught himself wishing to go back to normal, but he's learning that this moment in history demands something much greater. He now sees this piece as a premonition. A rebirth is required. Lauren Coleman is a visual artist based in Detroit who explores the history of adornment and craft through objects, video, photography, and performance. In her work, she investigates beauty, body image, and the built environment. She builds objects and environments that interact with the body in ways that are often uncomfortable or grotesque. And for the majority of her work, she uses the body as the site for these interactions, which are documented in photographs and video and are presented as installations combining images, objects, and video. Devices for filling a void are connected to the ideas of presence and absence, physicality and distance. They literally fill the voids of the body and are documented in photographs, but the forms also imply a psychological filling of emotional or erotic voids. 
the objects become proxies for other or absent bodies, rigid, cold, and impersonal, but present. The work, which combines objects and photographs, also references ideas about women being incomplete or lacking, requiring augmentation by men, objects, dress, makeup, adornment, and medical intervention. Manal Kara is a Moroccan-American self-taught interdisciplinary artist and poet. Recent solo exhibitions include Interstate Projects, Prairie, and Basket Shop. Upcoming solo exhibitions include No Place, Super Duchess, and Hair Plus Nails. These works comprise a sculptural ceramic frame and photographic prints on cotton. The ceramic frames have images and text carved into them. The texts are sampled from the artist's writing as well as the ambient environment. These works were made during lockdown in 2020. Marina Kuchensky is a visual artist practicing in ceramics, mixed media, and installation. She earned her BFA from Bezalel Academy of Art and Design in Jerusalem, Israel, and her MFA from Pennsylvania State University. In Marina's work, she investigates the human experience, the animal experience, and the ways animals have been perceived in both historical and contemporary contexts. Animal subjects are used to open up human understanding of animal experiences. While the differences between humans and other species, nature and culture are deconstructed. The ambiguity that results from the need to move beyond a singular point of view is a catalyst for making forms that interplay between the beautiful and the eerie. Transformation of objects can shift the way they are viewed through changes in scale, material, color, or the way they are positioned in space. The works reflect on the condition of silent existence, on being quiet and contemplating the world from the perspective of another animal. It's about learning from animals, engaging with the eyes of another living being. Animal eyes, their similarity and difference from our own, teach us about our own humanity and the wildness within us. Their gaze reaches a place that human language cannot describe. The animal notices our gaze and regards us. As we return the gaze, we have an opportunity to see what our world is like and what it could be. Heidi Lau lives and works in New York. Reconfiguring both personal and collective fragmented memories, Heidi Lau's vessels reimagine symbolic artifacts and zoomorphic ruins as materialization of the archaic and the invisible. In the process, she reenacts the non-linearity and materiality of the past, molding a tactile connection to the disappearing, impossible identity of home. Taoist mythology, folk superstitions, and Macau's colonial history provide essential source material for her exploration of transcendental homelessness, displacement, and nostalgia as the condition of contemporary existence. Tiffany Leach is a studio ceramic artist and educator whose sculptures address the social norms of contemporary society for women. Currently Associate Professor of Art, Leach is the Department Chair of Visual Arts and Co-Director of the MFA Program in Visual Arts at Jacksonville University. Leach's artwork has been selected as one of only 20 international ceramic artists to exhibit at the Dubol Exhibition in Lille, France at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Jacksonville and at the Boca Raton Art Museum. This body of work is empowered by the associations of cultural influence in terms of relationships in the exploration of journey. The traditional use of the vessel as a means of containment is a starting point for the works. The vessels and forms are hybrids of figurative shapes, animal traits, and horizon lines. It is about physical and emotional relationships, conversations, and thoughts of the social persona we project as individuals searching for connections to a larger entity. The orbs created from visual lines are elements used as stand-ins for emotional space while attempting to address experience, time, or memory. Through this series, she explores the role of the female in contemporary society and social norms associated with those roles. The medium of ceramics lends itself to the mission of this work through historical references and the tactile nature of the material. The objects of this body of work are self-reflective. She strives for them to be narrative in nature. 
The process used for this piece included hand-built ceramic stoneware with luster and resin pieces constructed each day of a 30-day quarantine and installed with string to mark the graph of the COVID-19 curve in her state. Since 2012, Toronto-based ceramic artist Diane Lee and New Orleans-based visual artist Robin Leroy Evans have been exploring their shared fascination with the vessel and how it relates to the female form. Referencing domestic ceramics and ancient Grecian urns, the artists use personal histories and imagery to create a living archive of their processes. Lee and Leroy Evans create narratives using their bodies while investigating the relationship as women artists working together, as well as their friendship, which has spanned 15 years, three continents, and many, many cups of coffee. They highlighted tension expressively through their movements. They drape their bodies in fabric to camouflage themselves and witness the shapes they can create to see the expressions of their form. They hold the ceramic vessels they made to juxtapose stillness to their movements and to suggest a narrative. Through their process of gathering, selecting, and wrapping fabrics, creating the ceramic vessels, and setting a scene, they relied on each other's strengths and supported each other's weaknesses as they work through their creative process. They challenged each other and encouraged the development of ideas. The photography portion of their collaboration draws on the tensions between collaborative exchange and captures the emotion of connection. Clay Leonard is an American artist. He earned his MFA from Bowling Green State University in Ohio and his BFA from Adrian College. He currently serves as an assistant professor of ceramics at the University of Houston, Clear Lake in Houston, Texas. Some of his favorite childhood memories were formed around the dinner table, eating and engaging in conversation. He is drawn to the communal aspects of serving vessels while continuing to investigate their contemporary social significance. Through his work, he highlights the important ritual of sharing a meal, utilizing his ceramic serving forms as catalysts for interaction, connection, and communication. Formally, he strikes a balance between pristine design and qualities of the handmade object. He has an affinity for crisp lines, creating innovative and simple geometric form, and instilling in his work subtlety and softness that serve to highlight the process and humanize the work. He utilizes interaction of multiple forms to mimic the work's intent through form and surface while making connections to mass production and social interactions. His communal vessel forms reinforce the social significance of connection, offering an incentive for interpersonal interaction and to reclaim the table. Anna Mayer's art practice is sculptural and social. Mayer is currently assistant professor of sculpture at University of Houston, where she oversees the ceramics program. In 2008, she placed a series of ceramic sculptures in the canyons of Malibu, California to remain in the landscape until they were fired by wildfire. In 2018, Woolsey Fire, six of the 12 sculptures were wildfired. These drawings are her rumination on the sculptures out in the canyons, reflecting on the way the project exists in her and in others' imaginations, and that we should be speculating about alternative futures rather than property and other forms of capital. I Am Occupied is a series of pairs of mugs coupling two people who can't otherwise be together. In some cases, the sculptures bridge distance, others bridge time. The pair in this exhibition represent her brother-in-law and father who weren't able to meet while her father was alive. During the Victorian era, mourning rituals included women's black mourning wear, which was gradually and progressively inflected with lighter patterns over periods of months or years as a means to mark and externalize the transition through grief. The mourning wear ceramics are similarly inflected. A black clay body is embedded with fragments of crushed porcelain dinnerware that she inherited when her parents passed away. Liz McCarthy is a Chicago-based artist combining ceramics with other media to explore the thematics of clay material and how it mediates human collectivity. She earned her MFA from the University of Illinois at Chicago in studio art and her BFA from the University of North Carolina Asheville in photography. Liz is a transdisciplinary artist, emphasizing clay in her practice. She's interested in how form and material dictate human behavior and social normativity through use. 
Specifically, she's interested in how functional forms in material traditions are performed, like verbal language, to define self and the sacred. In the studio, she creates sculptures and videos to investigate the potential for performance to reinscribe traditional modes of agency and collectivity. These resulting sculptures often incorporate a performance during their exhibition or are documents of performance. This piece is built modularly so the head and limbs can be pulled off. All pieces have multiple playable whistles embedded into the forms so they can be played by multiple people together. She was thinking about her body as a vulnerable vessel, but also as an instrument. This piece embodies a singular human experience or as it is played and pulled apart, it disembodies the human form and becomes a collective instrument for social performance. Erin Jane Nelson is an Atlanta-based artist who earned her BFA from the Cooper Union School of Art in 2011. She's the director of Burn Away, an Atlanta-based nonprofit magazine covering contemporary art in and from the South. Her ceramic collages are drawn from a lifelong interest in vernacular Southern craft, such as sailors' valentines, quilts, face jugs, and memory jars. Recent bodies of work have memorialized ecologically threatened barrier islands along the South Atlantic and Gulf Coast, where she has been making photographs for the past three years. In more recent works, like the ones exhibited here, she's interested in exploring the idea of the necropastoral, coined by poet Joelle McSweeney to describe living with the planet as a cadaver. Effects traditionally assumed of white femininity, cuteness, sentimentality, fragility, are warped into objects that bear obvious damage, glazed akin to mold, and papered with photographs of threatened lands and invasive species. A native of North Carolina, Kelly O'Brien is an artist based in Irving, Texas. O'Brien earned her BFA in Design and Cultural Anthropology from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro and her MFA in Ceramics from Arizona State University. Throughout this body of work, she seeks to consider the relationship between the disintegration of memory and awareness and how we navigate through the world. She is curious about how we make our way in the world as our minds age or our navigational strategies are pulled out from under us. Often, it is with grace and ease. We forget things. Boys and beacons, flags and anchors are all ways to represent an important place, home, a dangerous spot, a place to take shelter. This work is her exploration of the balance between trying not to forget and trying to be present. In Pilot, she explores the internal and external, memory and presence, indifference between anchored and tethered, guided and adrift. The diving helmet contains an image of a ship being guided out to sea by an unseen pilot boat. Depending on where the viewer stands, the picture may be right side up or upside down. We are connected to others through a fragile digital lens. In these pieces, she considers the relationship between the disintegration of memory and the navigational tools we depend on to stay in the present moment. Their way to understand the inevitable dependence on others as we lose our ability to navigate. The incredible irony of memory loss is that we live in the past in our pursuit to hang on to it. We seek to live in the present moment, rid ourselves of too many thoughts. With memory loss comes the freedom of living in the present and dependence on others. Connection to others is all that we have. Ashan Prajan is an educator and ceramic artist teaching at the University of West Georgia in Carrollton, Georgia, teaching art appreciation, intro to art, and design. He earned his MFA in Visual Arts Ceramics at Clemson University and his BFA in Ceramics at University of West Georgia. His abstracted vessels are Raku fired, providing vivid, spontaneous colors, symbolizing black pride, self-love, and freedom. The roughness of the vessels and patterns of glaze embody pain, grief, and treatment of African Americans fighting social injustices. Throughout history, African Americans have used the styling of hair as a way of passing down tradition and expressing their individuality, cultural heritage, and political beliefs. 
there has been a constant struggle for African Americans to wear their hair naturally without backlash from society. He uses hair styling techniques such as pinching, coiling, curling, and twisting to give the work an energetic appeal. The vessels are Raku fired because of the potential of producing vivid, spontaneous colors within its harsh environment. The colors of the hairstyles are bright and vibrant, symbolizing black pride, self-love, freedom, and the celebration of black culture. Kate Roberts is a native of Greenville, South Carolina. She earned both her MFA and BFA from the New York State College of Ceramics at Alfred University. She currently resides in Memphis, Tennessee, and is an assistant professor of art at the University of Memphis. Kate Roberts' practice is a meditation on time and its role in the decay of memories, objects, and the spaces they exist within. Inspiration is drawn from the architecture around her or events and choices that shaped a site. Her processes are repetitive and labor-intensive. She draws, constructs, and weaves to emulate states of filtration and decay. Distorted and ghostly, the installations result in a fleeting, fragile reminder of the consequences of nature, time, and circumstance. She works with clay in its unfired state. This state of clay inherently embodies the moment in between. By leaving the work unfired, she questions the permanence of these objects and sites. The results are installations exploring the connection between the vulnerabilities of the nature of clay in its many forms, from dust to wet slip to unfired and the mortality of people, objects, and places. Catherine Schroeder is interested in how material culture reflects societal values. Functional work draws Schroeder in with its social nature. Pottery interacting with people and people interacting with one another in the kitchen around pots. The work inherently lives with us and that accessibility offers an inlet for objects that provoke thought. Historic pots as cultural artifacts implore her to question the context of how studio pottery behaves in our lives today. Full Circle was a three-phase event. Full Circle red, white, and blue. The ceramic plate installation on the wall, Full Circle Dismantling, includes a video and photo of community members disassembling it over time, and the collaborative meal of the event in which visitors ate in a socially distanced format spaced outside the gallery. Viewers were able to enjoy a moment of social bonding at an important moment in time, six months since the shutdown began. While our country, communities, had become deeply divided over politics, racial tension, well-being of our entire selves. Full circle, red, white, and blue, was made, displayed, dismantled, and the plates dined on in a symbolic gesture of rethinking how our communities come together. Nicole Seisler is a Los Angeles-based ceramic artist who creates sculpture, installation, and public art in which she investigates time, materiality, process, and the overlapping roles of artist, viewer, participant, collaborator. Seisler earned her MFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and her BFA from the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Seisler is the director of the Los Angeles Contemporary Ceramics Gallery, AB Projects. Georgie Flood is a multidisciplinary artist, experimental filmmaker, and law student. Based in Melbourne, Australia, she engages with questions exploring causality, labor, repetition, and experimental encounters with the passage of time. She is pursuing a JD at Monash University in Melbourne. She earned an MFA from the Slade School of Fine Art in London and a BFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. In spring 2020, the established means by which we teach, learn, and connect underwent a seismic fracture. Ceramic educator Nicole Seisler responded to these circumstances by developing a series of experimental and experiential exercises brought to life on the page by Georgie Flood's pictures, intended for university students, educators, and independent makers interested in engaging emotionally and conceptually with the current state of the world through the language of clay. 
Each exercise is cast as a culinary recipe, which individuals can adjust or tweak according to the availability of space, materials, tools, and their own particular tastes. Dedicated to the investigations of ceramics, Lauren Skelly explores surface, form, and the layering of histories in her sculptures. Skelly draws from nature, loss, motherhood, and second chances in her studio practice. In 2015, she earned her MFA from Rhode Island School of Design with a concentration in ceramics. Skelly studied at Adelphi University from 2008 through 2014, where she earned her BFA and MA. Lauren considers herself an explorer, seeking new ways of layering, swirling, forcing, bending, breaking, and reusing surfaces. In her current body of work, she is grappling with new ways of navigating her roles as mother and maker. As a result, she is finding ways to reprocess older pieces through using them as foundations for new sculptures. She believes in second chances for pots, sculptures, installations, and people. She chases unexpected outcomes through the use of multiple firings. With each firing, a new element is added to the piece, furthering its transformation from fail to fixed. Not all firings are successful, but the learning that takes place is a win for her. She makes earthy lasagnas, formations made up of multiple parts fired several times. She responds to changes and observes balance in her work, seeking to push an uneasy tension between materials and form. Babette Wainwright was born and raised in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, where she started painting colorful market women at the age of nine. She was sent to the United States in the late 1960s to escape the oppressive regime of Papa Doc Duvalier. With no training, she painted from childhood memories, depicting women who she recognizes as Potomitan, a Haitian voodoo culture term referring to the temple's central post. Her work reflects the power and beauty of her African culture. Wainwright discovered the magic of clay in 1998. Her work is informed by her African roots in the pre-Columbian peoples of Haiti, Arawak and Taino. In 2000, she earned an MFA and has since been working mainly with clay, creating forms that convey her spirituality. She uses the techniques of the peoples of Africa and the Arawak and Taino of Hispaniola, such as coils, slab, and press molds, which she makes from natural and found items. Her pieces are colored with oxides and some are burnished. She bisque fires them before smoke firing them in an old oil drum. She sometimes attaches natural fibers, wood, rusty nails, and small bones. The pandemic left her starving for color, so she decided to adorn some of the work with fragments of acrylic painted canvas. When threatened by hatred and disease, physical and otherwise, we often turn to our gods, our saints, our lawas. She turns to the spirit of her ancestors who live in her head for protection, guidance, and solace. She lets them speak through her art. Joe Watko is a ceramic artist based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She graduated from Tyler School of Art in 2008 with a BFA in ceramics and BFA in painting. She is a studio assistant and glaze technician for Jason Silverman Ceramics, where she is focusing on maintaining a ceramic studio practice in both sculptural and functional work. Her work is informed by processes in nature and our connection to or distance from them. She also explores internal and interpersonal connection. This work takes the form of sculpture, installations, tile, and utilitarian vessels. Objects have weight that is physical and societal. They can act as symbols for our inner and outer selves. Joe Watko relies on this symbolism to create connections and to initiate conversations. This exploration has utilized slab-built porcelain to create different objects. The slab has allowed the pieces to draw on the feel of other materials in addition to the nature of porcelain itself. As such, they are not exact replications of objects, but the ideas of them and connotations surrounding them. Those meanings might be personal, political, critical, or celebratory. Those contradictions are welcome. Originally from Chihuahua, Mexico, Flor Widmar is a ceramic artist who has exhibited her sculptural installations both nationally and internationally. She earned her BFA in ceramics from Sierra Nevada College and her MFA from Cranbrook Academy of the Arts. 
She is currently a ceramic professor at Emporia State University in Kansas. By repeating the same elements, yet building new forms each time, she uses repetition in her work to explore personal negotiation and solace through daily rituals. The slight variation between the repeated elements draws the viewer in as they discover the unexpected in the familiar. Repetition in her chosen materials creates a physical manifestation of an object in time. Working with colored porcelain, she delicately makes small pinched coils that are added to each other to create lines in a sort of strata that is essential for her sculptures and images. By combining materials with different densities, like photographs, thread, and porcelain, she contrasts each element to the next, whether in color or texture. Adam Youngbluff earned his BFA from Miami University of Ohio in 2005. After completing his MFA at the University of Mississippi, Young Bluff moved to St. Petersburg, Florida to be an artist in residence at the St. Petersburg Clay Company. Living in the times of COVID-19 has reshaped ideas and viewpoints. This process has given Young Bluff new insight into what his artwork may be. Before, it started by engaging with a new landscape. Now, he thinks the conceptual water may be deeper. As he builds a body of work for an upcoming solo exhibition, Home I'll Never Be, he speculates if the title could be read as negative. A close and far balancing act at the end of the world looks at a connection. The base is meant to subtly resemble a trophy, but also a seesaw. A cup and a bowl share the stage as two objects that can do the same thing, but probably shouldn't. If quarantine taught us anything, it is that there is a balance to all our relationships. A good day can be bad for someone else, or the emotions can flip on a dime. Jia Shang is a multidisciplinary artist and educator who was born in southern China, grew up in suburban Maryland, and came to adulthood in Appalachia. Jia Shang's practice is an unlearning of assimilation and shame. She contemplates how the physical body is seen in the dominant public sphere and privately within itself. Working in repetitive processes, she falls into a physical form of meditation in which she trusts her body to perform instinctively. Much of her work requires a multi-layered system of experimenting, scavenging, and a regimented routine. It is an intimate performance of the invisible labor between her body and materials. She is drawn to materials of infinite potential with set characteristics that reveal themselves the more time spent with them. She cares for and tends to the individual pieces that make up the whole, much like her forebears who tended to their fields of crops. Working methodically gives her order and purpose. Yet she wonders how we know when the cycle of routine becomes a false comfort or a vicious habit that no longer nurtures us and causes us harm.